This is our final episode of me physically building the skydiver. He will be complete by the end of this episode. And then in our last final, final episode, which will be next, we will do the maiden flight or maiden drop, I guess you could call it. And today's sewed, we are going over the container. Let's get started. First, I started out with some measurements because I wanted to make sure I at least came close to the appropriate size requirements uh, for the container so the parachute would fit inside of it, but without it being too big. Then came breaking out the Cordura nylon fabric and cutting out the backing and flaps of the container. And this is the actual material used to make real skydiving containers. And surprisingly, it smelled like formaldehyde. And I looked up why that was, and it turned out that was exactly what I was smelling. Uh, I guess they use that kind of stuff on some materials. I don't know, but it brought me back to my dissection days teaching biology. Kind of disgusting. Anyway, I then cut out a 3 by 5 inch sheet of basswood and used it to measure out how much material I would need for the back part of the container that would rest against the skydiver's back. And then glued it into the container with a hot glue gun so it would have a nice supported backing to it. While researching and watching a lady on YouTube make a decorative cardboard box, I learned that hot glue was a common tool used when working with such materials. Didn't know that. Another thing this project has taught me. Next came measuring out and cutting out the flaps of the container, all four of them. These would be used to secure the parachute inside the container. Another first for me was working with grommets, little metal rings that make holes in materials. Real parachute containers have these, only they're much bigger. And you typically see these on shoes for laces to be threaded through them. You know, I got to admit, installing these were probably the most fun I had on this entire project. Here I am installing two of them, one in the bottom flap and one in one of the side flaps. Later, I would install a black one on the top flap as well. I found that it made life a little easier while actually a lot easier while packing the container to have that third one. And you'll see why here in a little bit. I didn't record video of it because I, I it was just too small to really capture on camera. But in the second side flap, I sewed in a tiny elastic loop that would be threaded through those grommets while packing to help make everything secure. It was what I just stuck that little bit of weed eater line through. This is actually done on a real skydiving container. Uh, and when a pilot chute is deployed, it pulls that pen or weed eater line out of the loop to release the main. But in this case, it just is being used temporarily to allow me to free up my hands to finish packing uh, the parachute. And before flights in the future, I will release that um, weed eater line prior to drone startup and takeoff. I also sewed on the hold down elastic cord to the top flap and hand sewed a metal ring onto the end of it to be used to deploy the parachute. So check out how tightly this sucker is packed. Listen to this thing deploy. It was so tight. It actually took me quite a bit of effort to pack this thing in there, it like made me sweat, um, but it was possible. So I carried on with sewing on some decorative colored lining like real containers have. Uh, this took quite a bit of time because to secure them flush with the edge of the container flaps, I had to first partially sew each one down by hand before using the sewing machine. Yeah, because the sewing machine would just slightly move the materials on startup and sew it down off target, not nominally. But yeah, so here's what really hurt. Like I said in other videos, um, there was never really a time during this project where I had to start something completely over because of a mess up, maybe save for the, the drone mount kind of uh, mechanism. But uh, now was the time because the more I practiced packing with this finished container, the more I disliked having to work my butt off so hard. Uh, the flaps were just too small. Uh, so I made the final and painful decision to cut them off of the backing and sew slightly bigger flaps on, uh, which are the gray ones here. So there went two full days of work down the drain, but you know, I guess it's better than say blowing a starship up and setting the whole schedule back a month or two, right? So this is what the almost finished product looks like. Slightly bigger for convenience sake. And this is where I installed the third grommet and the top flap. And I also sewed on a little piece of material to cover the grommet just to make it a little bit more appealing to the eye. So after doing the measurements for the elastic straps release pin, I glued in one and sewed it in place. The red material's length indicates to me how far it has to be inserted into the skydiver's neck to where the servo arm can actually go through the ring. So this is what it looks like once it's locked and loaded. This is the first official test of the release mechanism using the container itself. And what do you know? 
failure. This was the light at the end of the tunnel point of the project for me. And <laughs> go figure, it's where I started having problems. Not big problems really, but problems that annoyed me because they required me to unscrew things and take things apart and insert new things I had to make to get this thing to cooperate. And so once that was taken care of, after a couple hours of tinkering, I was ready for test number dose. <laughs> finally. <sighs> yes, finally. The final hurdle that needed to be hurdled was hurdled. So to fix the problem, I just switched this pin from this secured piece that doesn't move up and down, which puts a lot more pressure on this arm and ended up burning out this servo that I'm holding. So change that to this one that can move up and down, which creates less stress. So now it was time for a full up test of everything from drone release to parachute deployment to turning the guy with his arms. All right, here we go, test run. Let's do this. He is armed and dangerous. <laughs> He's all hooked up, ready to go. Let's do it. Lying on the pad, drone goes up, lifts him up, he goes up, he wobbles a little bit, a little bit of turbulence. <laughs> turbulence, ah, turbulence. Okay. And we are releasing him from the drone in three, two, one. All right, he's released. And he's falling, free falling, free falling, free falling. And we deploy the parachute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So this deploys. Whoop. All right. And I don't have the toggle lines hooked up yet. That's the last thing I got to do. But let's make sure he can steer them. Great success. Oh, yeah. Personally, I love how the pilot chute is flung out the back of the container upon deployment. I didn't exactly design it to do that. It was what I was hoping would happen, but really it just came down to the way it was packed into the container. I just got lucky that it did it on its own to show me what exactly is up and how it was working. The very last thing to do now was attach the steering lines of the parachute to the mini carabiners that clip onto the skydiver's hands. I waited to do this for last because I needed to make sure the length of the lines were as accurate as possible to avoid you know, steering issues during the first drop. The bad thing about it was that there wasn't a convenient way to do this without physically dropping the skydiver with the parachute attached. And I didn't want to do that in fear that I would break him. You know, I tried building a crude simulator with the same shoulder to arm measurements relative to, sky, relative to the skydiver, but it proved to be just too heavy when I did the drop test. So I decided to just hang the skydiver upside down in my closet and eyeball the lines, shortening them to the point where they just slightly lifted the part of the parachute they were attached to. It doesn't sound hard, but it, it kind of was, and I can't even be certain that they're correct or even close enough to correct without dropping him. So we'll just have to find out on his maiden flight and make any corrections that need implemented after the fact. Kind of like trimming the rudder of an airplane during flight. All right, so this is actually the last thing. I managed to find a couple smaller batteries. A 4.8 volt battery that's the same as the bigger 6 volt I already had, just a cell smaller. It's not much, but it's something. And now the battery can sit flush with the back panel. It brings the skydiver's total weight to one pound, 6.8 ounces, which is less than a pound and a half. But I also managed to find a much smaller 3.7 volt LiPo battery that brought the total weight down even further to one pound, 3.8 ounces. Although I had to do some hacking with the connector to get it to fit this receiver. Now the receiver requires at least 4.2 volts to operate, 
but I know 3.7 is the nominal charge of the battery, so when it's fully charged, it's a little more than that. So I decided to give it a try, and it still powered the receiver on and moved the arms. It even dropped the load from the suspension line. However, the first try at deploying the chute was a little glitchy. Two, one. No. Ooh, there we went. Cut, took a couple switch flips on that one. But the second attempt worked flawlessly. All right, test number two in three, two, one. So I think I'm gonna give this battery a try, but I'm gonna be sure to do a distance check before we drop him, just to make sure we still get the proper frequency range. I could have went with the next smallest LiPo, a 7.4 volt battery, but the weight was about the same as the four cell. And I read that it can fry this particular receiver without an ESC and adding one would just add more weight than what a four cell would be. So now our build is officially built. It's finished. After just one month to the day of relentless manual labor, it's over. This probably should have taken me a couple months to do at least, but I really, I really dedicated my, my time to, to making this thing happen. I would say the majority of my waking hours, uh, almost every day during that month. You know, I went into this project hoping to learn some things and it did not disappoint. And now there's only one thing left to do, raise them up hundreds of feet into the sky and drop the son of a gun. And we'll do that in our next episode. Stay tuned, it will be releasing soon. Until that time, Godspeed.